Hello and welcome to Locked In FPL. We're back for the final episode of the preseason. Today's a special one. I'm, of course, FPL Nima, and I'm joined by my co host at FPL Fella. We'll get more into our origin story and how we met a bit later. Thank you all for being here for the Roast My Team special. There's still time. Get your screenshots in on X or Discord. We will be going through screen share and roasting all your teams. Annual trend here. So it's not a rate my team. So please don't get offended. It is meant to be a bit of lighthearted fun. We've all got fatigue from the amount of drafts we've seen over the last few weeks. And it's just a bit of fun in the last kind of two days going into deadline. But yeah, who better to be with 48 hours pre-game week one deadline than my good friend and partner and kind of FPL fellow. Welcome to the channel, Dan. Good to have yeah, you. Yeah, no, thank, thanks for having me, Neymar. No, it's, good to, it's good to be here. Um, I feel like I see you more than I see my missus. But uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, good to, it's good to be invited on. Nice one. So we're going to go into it quickly today because there's a lot of drafts and we want to try and keep it under the 60 minutes that we've been aiming to do so far in the preseason. But I think to get us kind of going, before the roast, there was a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So the first thing was actually just about how we met a little bit. And normally when the guests have come on the show, I've asked them about when they started playing FPL. Maybe we start there, actually, then we talk about how we met. I'd rather know more to start with about Dan, the FPL manager, FPL fella. I don't know if he's like your alter ego, how many seasons you've played, what your best finishes are, and maybe your favourite memory. I've been trying to get this from every guest, so sorry to put you on the spot. Not no, 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 that's fine. So Fella is actually a nickname that I've got kind of from school. So all of my actual school friends do actually call me um, Fella, which is, yeah, a bit weird. Um, I won't go into the story as to why they call me that. Um, it was around, I think, I'd say... 2017 18 i had a twitter account anyway and all i would do is kind of tweet about fpl so i changed my then handle that was just my my full name to fpl fellow and just i obviously do tweet about other stuff other than fpl but mainly mainly just fpl but um yeah i've been playing since I mean, obviously, this format since around 2006, 2007. So that's what 17 years. So probably older than, uh, or probably long longer than some some people have been alive that play it now. Um, and then, actually, during the 90s, I used to play um, Daily Telegraph, where you used to phone in your transfers. And no get way! So you've been playing fantasy for yeah, that long. So was, okay. Like me and my dad were like massive, obviously, football fans growing up. Um, we used to like kind of just play it together. No mini leagues, no overall ranks, just me and him playing against kind of each other. Um, and then, yeah, in the it, 2006, it was just a, a group of mates, six or seven of us playing in a in a small mini league that has now grown to kind of over 100 where everyone kind of went to university. Friendship groups got bigger. Um, and then obviously, yeah, FPL community are kind of, joined i don't i don't know if we say we joined the fpl community but found it in kind of 17 18 and then we obviously had um we had kind of lockdown um which obviously i think grew the fpl community on on twitter as we couldn't kind of go out but my style of play is i'd say i'm kind of a strategy player um i, I like to kind of look forward um i always have this mantra that you that last week's points are gone and you shouldn't chase those points i mean i do chase kind of value early in the season but um i try not to kind of chase last week's points and i look forward to kind of fixture blocks of kind of four five six games in the future and then obviously with this new that you're able to roll kind of five transfers now um i think that will suit the way i play because I'll be able to kind of look forward in those blocks to see where I want to jump on and off um, certain teams. So that's how I'm kind of trying to set up my draft to kind of roll as many transfers in the first few weeks. I think a lot of people are, are kind of, or the engage managers are going to try and do that as well. Yeah, no, so tell us about, because not just, the, obviously the FPL community got bigger during the lockdowns and that's how we did meet. We'll get to that, but how has that kind of changed your play style as well would you say now that you have more access to tools like do you find that it's getting more difficult each season and i'd love to know about your recent history because you're one of the managers i know that one of the reasons i wanted you on this show especially for game week one is you've had quite a few good years recently 
And I would consider these to be the hardest years to kind of do well in FPL with that access to knowledge and the bigger engaged player base. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about your ranks as well. I'd love the viewers to know. But it, it, It's weird because I don't tend to use too much, too many tools. I'm actually not, I'm not subscribed to FPL Review, Hub, Scout, kind of any of them. I, I tend to use any, any kind of free tools that are out there. As I said, I look at fixtures. So I look at FDRs that people post. I, I might create my own. Um, I, I, I tend not to use the official one because I don't really believe in it but um i think my ranks got better as you said kind of 2019-20 around lockdown onwards i think literally because i became a bit of an addict um i i probably think about fpl far too much at least um kind of every day um my missus plays so we talk about it she's a bit, a bit more of a casual than i am um but yeah i think I used to play football um, on Saturday afternoon, so I wasn't kind of able to maybe look at team leagues or um, look at things in kind of more detail. I'd be kind of playing football between like 12 and 5 because we used to travel away, so I didn't get to kind of watch as much football as I, I kind of do now. Um, I'd go out on Saturday nights and wouldn't catch match of the day. Um, I'd catch probably one or two games a week, so I wasn't able to kind of look at or watch as much football as I kind of I kind of do now. Um, but yeah, I think just becoming more engaged in FPL really has kind of improved those ranks. And I guess that nicely brings us into how we met as well. Tell us those ranks, though. I feel like you're trying to keep it very humble and keep it moving, but. Have a look in the background while I introduce how we met to the viewers. But um, yeah, I also want to know your ranks at some point. Um, I should have. Yeah, I up. mean, where are they? So I think my so my 2018-19 season was 300k, but then 2019 to 20 I finished seven and a half k. 2021 was nine k. 21 2 was 35k. Uh, 2022 23, I finished six and a half K. And then last year was very average, 250k. So yeah, three three 10 Ks in in um in five years. So hopefully this year I can three kind of 10 Ks in five years. That so is hopefully I can kind of get it up to uh those dizzying heights again this year. I, I honestly that is incredible. One thing I just want to add on that. Um, let me just put here your rank. I'm gonna three times top 10k in five. Okay, well, I don't even have three top 10ks, but um, that's a different story. Um, I brag about my triple digits, um, as you know. Yeah, I even I mean, make four digits into three digits. I mean, that was the year that was the that was kind of I mean, we we, we can uh talk about how we met, but that was the big year, wasn't it? The, the first big, big kind of FPL meets. But I don't know if you want to introduce how we kind of met yeah for sure but before we do that i've actually i'm looking at our sklw teams mini league and i've got it ranked on league standing for the past seasons right so what's funny is um in second place is craig so editor with an average rank of 58k over the last six seasons i'm third with 72k in the last six seasons and you're a little bit further down in sick with 105k over six seasons right but as soon as i go to the last five seasons fellas 11 as it's called Jumps up to 62k average in the last five years, and I'm just uh, edited. No, so I'm below you. So now I'm below you on 63k. So you're exactly 540 average rank better than me over the last five years. So that's mad, but it's crazy. We're both yeah, the top yeah, yeah. It's Craig crazy. Falls out I mean, it's, it's obviously that one year that you finished with a triple digit rank. Oh, is that what's carrying me up? Here, yeah, it must be. It must be. I've had my fourth fourth best finish last year and it felt like one of the worst starts to a season I'd ever had. So I think it shows that if you're diligent just, and you just keep yeah. playing and let the player base around you make mistakes, the longer the season goes on, that you will eventually get to your targets, which brings me to the point that I really aim for like top 100K. I don't know if you're similar. Yeah, but, so do I. Top 1%. Yeah, start top a season, 1%, just top 1%. Yeah. That's what I'm top aiming 1%. for. Yeah. 10 weeks in, I reassess my position. I decide, can I aim for higher or am I going to be chasing all season to even get to this uh, five-digit rank? So oh, yeah, yeah. that's my thoughts. But yeah, let's talk about how we met a little bit because 
I think that's also during the, it's just as we were coming out of the first lockdown, right? So it was 2021, Johnny and Ed had the first fest. I'd gone to a Planet FPL kind of a summer party before that. And then just as we got to September, we had the first ever kind of meets. And it wasn't really meets back then. It was like five, six friends who met just going to the pub to watch Man City play Arsenal. It was a good day out. People saw the photos on X. And from there, we ended up kind of after maybe three or four of these monthly events and having met each other, rebranding it as FPL meets because we didn't want it to be like a personal thing. And it's gone from strength to strength. So this will be like the third or fourth year now. So September 2024 will be exactly three years. There must have been at least... 30 to 40 in London yeah, in that time, 100%. And since then, obviously, it's been amazing to see, like, all over the world, different cities, different countries. We've got some of the different kind of chapter leads in the chat, even for different cities around the world. You know, you're, you're in the WhatsApp group, right? There's, like, 50, 60 managers from all over the world doing the same thing, just voluntarily hosting meetups, bringing the Epoch meet together offline. So that's kind of our thing. That's I'm glad we're finally on the show together. I know you've come on the Arsenal Bite Size pod, but that was to preview West Ham and, this is a bit more exciting because by FPO and it's what we get to do like every month, right? Like we go, we watch the games live, we chat, we have a good time. And that's what I want this channel to be the rest of the year. I want to bring people on, chat about whatever's the big two topics of the week and keep it moving, like casual fireside chat. But yeah, what are your thoughts? I guess when you first came into me, so it would be good to hear what your perspective was because I know it's quite overwhelming. Like even I'm, I'm an extrovert and I go into these rooms and you see like big groups of people in circles before you've arrived. You're not sure what to do or say. It takes like oh, a bit of courage to come, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a weird one because I get kind of excited to meet new people, excited that, I mean, I'm excited for Friday. A lot of people that will be there I've kind of met already, but also excited that I'll meet kind of the new people that I haven't met yet. Um, but yeah, as you said, you do get that nervous and anxiety with meeting new people. What are they going to think of you and all that kind of stuff? But I think what we've tried to do with FPL meets is kind of, it's a bit cliche, but kind of create a kind of community. And, and you know, we've got our WhatsApp group that's probably got over 100 people now. Everyone kind of gets along on there. I think the, the reason why everyone kind of behaves is because everyone has met kind of in person. There's never been any of that online beef that everyone kind of speaks about or sees. We, we only add on, people on to the group, right? It's on, important on to know. X. Um, people only get added to the whatsapp group once they've actually come to come to an fpl meet um and as you say it's grown from maybe five or six kind of people in a in a pub um to now i mean the one that we hold on the last game of the season gets well over 100 people in a pub um all getting excited over people kicking a ball about and us moving shirts around a around the football pitch so no it's it's brilliant and obviously friday there's fest um but people are obviously welcome to come to the pre-meets that we'll be hosting beforehand um and essentially that the, the reason why we host that is because we know that kind of people are nervous to go to a big event that's got 300 people um i don't like turning up even to meets on my own but once i know there's people there that i know or i've met before um and get involved and and you're all there to talk about the same the same subject at the end of the day we're all kind of FPL nerds or geeks or like and, and we're just we're just wanting to talk about this kind of hobby or that we that we've all got I think you've said it very well so if anyone who was on the fence if you're going to fest if you already have your tickets I think there was only 10 tickets left yesterday so it's probably run out by now but if you have a ticket we're around from midday as fella says in Mother Kelly's in uh, Vauxhall it's about five minutes from the fest venue please do come in say hi to either of us if you see us like Tell us, obviously, who you are on X or on YouTube. Um, that's always the funniest part for me. Like, I remember when I met uh, Sponge, and I'm like, who is he? He's like, oh, I'm FPL Sponge. And it took me so long to, like, know people's first name. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. you don't know whether to introduce your name or your X handle. But, yeah, it's, it's all very much a lot of good fun. Um, we will um, keep it moving from here in the interest of time. I think we'll go straight into the screen share at this stage and actually just start roasting teams. What do you think? Should, are we yeah, ready to get into it? Maybe just before we do that, let's shout out everyone who's made the effort to be here live. There's almost 30 of you. We're 15 minutes in. Thank you for bearing with us as we got delayed. Sorry for the late start as always. And um, yeah, thank you first. We got Andrew in the house. We're actually doing the sleeper draft with him, right? Good to see you, buddy. Let us know if it's me or fellas turn to pick while we're on air. BW Splitter, one of our YouTube members. 
Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining in. FPL Maga, good to see you, my friend. Claire FPL, another one of our callers. BW Spitz is very excited for this one, so we'll get to your draft soon. Don't worry. FPL Sparta, all right, all. Yes, he's speaking to me. So I'm seeing people here who I've met all over the country, all over the world, like through FPL. I know you met with Black Wolf, who obviously runs the US side of the meets. Yeah, when yeah, yeah. On the West Coast. So what an amazing community, online and offline. Um, what else do we have? So Colm's got a question for you. I'll leave that for the live Q&A at the end. Uh, Ballroom Jam, thank you for tuning in. Bobby says, Nima running late. I think that's sarcasm. Thank you for tuning in, Bobby. Akiv, good to see you. Yelena, FPL, evening, guys. Good to see you. What else have we got? we got FPL Rubber Ducky. Quack, quack. Good to see you, my friend. Anyone missed out? Tommy Gunn, evening, everyone. Good to see you, Tommy. Getty FPL, good evening, all. Stop it, try to miss anyone. Ant, good to see you, my friend. Why am I thinking of the film Flushed Away when I look at Fella? Um, Do I look like a rat? Is, is Flushed Away the film with the rats? Is that, why, is that why I look like a rat? No, but I'm sure I've seen Ant say some stuff like this before, so I recognise the name. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Um, oh, Nate Hal says, FPL meets Goated. Good to see you. FPL Discomfort, hello, you beautiful people. Anyone else? Hayden, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in live. Rehan Bashir, good to see you, my friend. Hello. Dhruv, I'm hoping to be there at the FPL meet someday. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Dhruv. Cypher, Nima, cool dude. That's a great praise, but... I, I'm not so cool, don't worry. Like, we all just not love anymore. moving shirts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we just love out. moving shirts on a screen, right? Exactly. That's all we love to do. Like, we love FPL. And Chris Church, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for tuning up in us. FPL Church is welcome, X. So we'll keep putting up your messages as we go. I've already started nine of them for comments later. We will come to all your questions at the end. I think the main thing we want to do now is just begin the roast. So let me timestamp this 17 minutes in for the roast to begin for anyone coming here afterwards on podcast or on video. Cool. I think we're... We're good to get the party started, fella, you know. Um, let, let's see how this goes. So I think the first teams I'm going to go to are on Discord. And, yeah, keep keep the comments coming in the chat, guys. So the first ones are from the members and the patrons from YouTube as well. So Greenback Golfers team. Um, they want to discuss Rice. So I think you're also someone that we can talk to. He was my input as an Arsenal fan. I know you're obviously a West Ham fan for anyone who doesn't know. So I'd love to know your thoughts on Rice. Um, this is their draft. Let's begin with the roast. I think we'll score them out of 10. And remember, like we are, we will potentially be harsh with the scores, but listen more to the comments. It's just a friendly banter at the end of the day. So, yeah, I'll let you take the first one. I think this one's a good one for you, and then I we'll think, talk about rice. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a good team. It's got good balance. I think the only thing that we've got missing there is obviously a city a city um, attacker. Obviously, the the glaring the glaring um, space is obviously with. Harland, but he's obviously spread that money well with um obviously Isaac Havertz, Gavardio, Trent and Salah. Um I think I would worry maybe in game week two, but for obviously game week one, this is a this is a decent team. Um look uh, other than the other than the goalie, you could probably bench boost this in game week one, to be honest. Um everyone there has got decent fixtures and um and and um, should start in, in game week one. I think I'll give it a. I mean, I've got Haaland in my draft, so whenever I see a, a a draft that hasn't got Haaland, I might be a bit, a bit harsh. But I think I'll give it a. I think I'll give it a seven. It's got it's got a good coverage overall. Yeah, I think anything lower than a seven is a bit harsh. And yeah, seven yeah. In it, have seven in itself is purely yeah. because. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, we're roasting, fella. You're being too nice to green back golfer. I think the only thing is, I mean. It's good that he's actually put his budget there because he could, mm. he could use that point five to, he could he could obviously drop Havertz to Solanke. Then he's got a million to make. He could do Wood Mitchell, to Pedro, Mitchell, right? Or he, he could do Havertz to Solanke, and then do Mitchell to an Arsenal defender covering that, and then he's obviously got then two Spurs attackers. Um, he could obviously move Sun to Foden if then Foden's fit in game week two. Um, but overall, yeah, seven out of ten. I don't want to kind of spend too much time yeah. on. I'm going to be harsh and say, um, and these are for uh, these are my reasons why it's getting a five out of ten. Luke, I'm sorry, bro. Is um, 
I just don't like I hate rotating. So like having a front eight, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's like a six million and two five point five millions in that eight. It's like I just feel like benching that five point five or six every but, week for me is not the one. But do you not think that because we've now got this where we can roll five mm. that that like the rotating kind of every week means that we might want to use our bench a bit more. Even if they get injured, right, or suspended, I guess it's nice to actually have proper Nice to have the bench. It means that, for example, say Newcastle get a d- difficult fixture, he can then use two two or three of his bench to, to swap it around. Um, I don't know about Brighton. Brighton, are, Brighton weren't that great at the end of last season. I think their only goal in one, one of the months was an own goal. So I don't know how it, how it's going to be this season. So he's got kind mm. of double Brighton there. Um, I mean, he could swap Minte to kind of Smith Rowe. But yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think it is. What, what about Rice? And then we'll go, we'll start going through drafts much more quickly. But um, I just want to know about the question about Rice. Was he 6.5 million? I know you'd said if he was 5.5, you would have had him in. That's exactly season. it. I think that was, I know we were in a group chat and that was one thing that, I, I said it before the even the um, prices come out that if Rice was 5.5, he would be kind of straight in my team. Um, I think at six, it's a decision to make. But I think at 6.5, with all of the other options, attacking options we've got at 6.5, um, it's difficult. Rice could become that one where he goes on a run and we all bring him in and by the end of the season, he's... 7.1 million because we've all brought him in and he's and it means that we've all got an Arsenal mid in our in our team then. Um I think he got what two assists on the weekend. Um yeah. not that I was watching, but um yeah, he's on corner he's on all corners now. I just one side, just one side. Oh just one side. And, yeah, and I knew still takes. when he went to Arsenal he he become a lot more kind of progressive with the ball and I'm a lot more attacking, a lot more confidence to actually take long shots on. Like he's got a, a few goals for us out from outside the box. The one against, I think it was Wolves, I remember, in the COVID yeah. season. Um, so it's annoying at that 6.5 because when there's other players, when there's other players... You've got like Leon like, Bailey, right? You've, like... got, you've got Leon Bailey, you've got Nkuku, Nkuku. you've even got <laughs> Kudus. Um, the serious attacking Spurs, players. I think you've got a couple of the Spurs boys that are six point five. Um, you've got um, what's his name, the Gibbs White at, at Forest. When they've got decent fixtures, it's it's difficult because he's he's still playing six, I guess, for Arsenal. Yeah, um, so he prefers to play there. He said so himself. Yeah, that's I the, think that, well, yeah, Rice he is actually Rice is actually a centre back. Weirdly enough. Uh, he started out playing. He centre started back. out as a as a centre back, but then I think they realised how much of a good footballer he is. He was then able to and kind of cover up the, the pitch, pitch bit by bit. So so yeah, that's just my take on Rice. I love that. I wanted to just hear your opinion because you've obviously watched him for many more years than yeah. I have. And my biggest understanding is he prefers the six. That's the position he thinks he's like world class, and he is. Mm. Arteta thinks there's so much output he can bring for goals and assists, so he wants him to play further forward. But it means he's had to learn or like find a different approach to the system we play. And I think a lot of players who come for Arteta, he takes time to wed them in. So even if like Marino comes or now Calafiori's come, yeah. like I thought I'd see Calafiori in the preseason. He didn't barely appear because Arteta said, well, look, he's moved to a new country. He's learning a new system, new team. It's like how when Pep originally didn't used to rush players in, right? They'd have to learn the Pep way before they'd be in- entered in. So I do think to start with, there is a world in which like, Rice will play as the eight, but I'm not sure that I would go there as a game week one pick. I think it's a wait. And no, see for me. no, yeah, let's keep uh, going. So I've zoomed in so much, right? That now I can't see the drafts anymore. So let's keep scrolling down. So this one is from FPL Teacher as well. Um, I, I just shout out to Taste of Chaos 182. Thanks for tuning in live. We've got FPL Teachers team. So what do you think about this one? Let me zoom in again. So for the POC, I guess. Is this one? I, I might not even upload this one to podcast. I guess it's still a nice chat. So maybe as long as we talk about the assets and talk about relevant FPL points, it's still some kind of structured yeah, no, conversation. Yeah. But it's not like structured as like this is your prep for game we want. We're just randomly casually talking about players yeah. in every draft. Right? I mean, that's what it's going to be like with me and you. Um, 
I think we're going to see a pattern here where teams that have got Haaland and Salah are going to have places where people have had to compromise. And obviously the, the compromise here is um, he's got two kind of attacking players under under six million in Bob and Smith Rowe. And then obviously two um, 4.0 million defenders. Um, I don't hate it. I think obviously we both know from Salah in the Premier League from 2017, he's he's been one of the best players there is. Um, and obviously Liverpool's fixtures are just up there with the best out of, out of anyone's. But I think... I like this slightly better than the last one, but I don't know if I'm I'm on an eight point an eight and eight out of ten. See, that's yeah. why you should have given yeah. the other one a six. Well, no, a I six. gave it a five. I, I, now I've seen this, I'll give that one a six, and then I'll give this one a we seven. We needed a benchmark, right? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, yeah. Luke. I know your team is actually good, and just to add to that, he does like having a deeper squad even last season before the five free transfers, and his style mm. does work for him. So I'm gonna try to get him on the channel in a few weeks as well. To oh, nice. share his thoughts um, at the end of August going into game week three. So he, he was on the roast my team last season as one of our super haulers. So excited to have him back. Um, I think we're going to start speeding along two minutes max per team from here. So this one, I feel like you've covered it well enough for me yeah. to not need to cover it. We'll keep going. I'll just give my scores. I think if one of us gives their opinion about something interesting about each team that we see or a player that's not in other drafts that we've already done. And then by the end of the stream, we'll have covered most players across most positions. Um, and yeah, if we answer your questions, if we make you laugh, please, please hit that like button if you're new to the channel. There's over 30 of you here. I think over half our viewers are usually not subscribed. So please do subscribe if you want to keep up to date with Locked in FPL for the rest of this season ahead. But um, I will give this one... So I gave a five for the first one. I really like this one. Um, the only thing missing for me is Arsenal and Nkunku. Mm. So I'm happy to give this... Um, I'm happy to give this a 7.5. We'll keep that moving. You didn't know there were 7.5s, did you? Um, no, I weren't, doing, I weren't doing half marks. Last year, someone got 1.5 or 0.5. So in the chat, as we go along, guys, let us know, please, um, in the chat, what your scores are to get involved. I'd love to know your scores in the chat. So this one is double Arsenal defence. We're forgetting how good they are. They'll revenge Aston Villa, I'm sure. Okay, so this one is from Dr. Green Farm, one of our Patreons. Let's see their team. So you got See, Raya was, and goal with I'm Saliba, glad, right? I'm glad he's got Nkunku because that was something I was going to ask you. Like he just seems to be the darling of of the FPL community at the moment. Like he's, I think I see him in well over fifty percent of people's drafts. Do you think he's as? I don't hate using the word, but do you think he's as essential as as you think he is? So this is the thing, right? So you know there's I'm basically ready with my team, but the one mm. thing is I want Saka. And I thought mm. the preseason might make someone like Martinelli or Prasad or Odegaard or Havertz more appealing to me, but I just still want Saka. Mm. And so I'm in a situation where I have to lose one of kind of originally it was Trent, Salah or Nkunku. And the more I thought about it, like, yeah, Trent could become Kwanzaa or, you know, Salah could become Saka. But I kept coming back to it and I was like, don't want to lose those guys for Liverpool's opening run of fixtures. <laughs> and like Salah's had the whole summer off. So I'm like, now I've got to the point where I didn't want Nkunku to go. I thought he was nailed. But he's the one who I might just downgrade. I'm thinking he could just be a 4.5. And then that way I still have Trent and Salah as well as Saka and Haaland. So I'm now going more that way. And the reason I bring this up is that it's made me question my own judgment that yeah. why was Nkunku so nailed in my head? And in my yeah. process, it was because a couple of years ago when he was at Leipzig, in UCL Fantasy, he was just like someone you'd captain yeah, on the yeah, day yeah. he played. He was hauling for fun. He was incredible. He's now come back. There's so many players in this Chelsea team. Would they you? Might... Yes, yeah, as in it's not as certain as it is. And now I look at this City first game and I'm like, yeah, the fixtures after are good. And if he stays injury free, mm. I think you'll make a mockery of his price. Yeah, but can yeah, I come yeah. in later? Like, could I go for someone more assured now? And do you know what I mean? Like, what are your? Would you like, be? Uh, would Would you be in your draft if he was a six and a half forward? I, I um, think. I think. I'm not sure. Probably he would. more. I think probably more so. You reckon? I don't know if he would. Yeah. Be. 
I like the. I guess the midfield slots are a bit hard to fill right now. He I don't think the in. points. He wouldn't get too, he, the points. Wouldn't, the points difference wouldn't be too much different. I guess. I mean, scoring a goal, you get more bonus points. But I guess it then frees up a midfield spot for someone else. Because I just feel there's so many. Obviously, we've both been doing draft, the draft format of, of the game. Mm. And I just feel like there's so many more midfielders than there are strikers. You're right. I guess when we've got 10 man or 12 player drafts, you get to the second or third round and there's that no forwards left in the game, mm. in the FPL. Because you've got Nkunku there in, in this team, sorry, but he hasn't got Eze, he hasn't got Gordon. So, if he so you would him, rank those above it. So it's funny because I don't have Eze or Gordon at the moment. I used to have um, Gordon, but he became Yota. Um, and I've not had Eze once. And mm. part of it is because I, I actually rank in Kunku higher than all of them, I think, because yeah. of the price. But equally, I'm thinking, do I do I just wait and see with Chelsea? Like, do I do I wait for the transfer window to close? Do I wait to see Nkunku stay fit? Like, if I am going to try to play a more slow and steady game and preserve transfers. But then I tell myself, maybe that's an edge I can get. Maybe while everyone's deluding themselves into believing they're going to roll at the beginning of the season, maybe these roll in the transfers. And I think James on Planet was saying on the chip strategy episode, maybe they're actually more useful later or are more likely to reach three or four save transfers later yeah, in yeah, the season. Yeah. Oh, of course. We'll, maybe we'll, right we'll now I want to catch price yeah. rises. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let, let's say I start with Bob and like he isn't the one that rockets and then Rogers does. If he drops by 0.1 for some reason, if he gets like a red or an injury that I've not accounted for, Next thing I know, he's 4.9 million and Rogers, who's maybe bagged the goal, is 5.1 by sun Saturday or Sunday, Monday. So I'm already like now 0.5 I've lost because I can't buy that player anymore. I've lost 0.1 each way. So at this stage, it's, you know, I think I'm going to maybe just I think there will be a lot. I think there'll be a lot more people rolling. How do I word this? I think there'll be a lot more people rolling more transfers in the second wild card. Than there will in the first wild card. For example, you might go into the first wild card with only two or three transfers, but I would say in the second half, I think there'll be a lot of people that will still have kind of four or five transfers, use their second wild card, and then probably use another five to do another wild card later on in the season when there's obviously the doubles, the blanks, um, maybe players getting rested because it's the end of the season, that kind of thing. Well, we talked a lot about Nkunku and just general FPL thoughts that came as a tangent, but what do we give this draft? I'm seeing some 6.35. I think that's for the previous team because they're saying they don't like I think this is cost. I think this one's I think this one's one of the best we've seen um out of the three. Um so I would give this an eight. You know what? I need to check this team. This looks like my bloody team right now, mate. <laughs> it's not got Saka. The only difference, right, is it has Jao Pedro instead of my Muniz. Mm. And with that money, it has Saliba instead of my Poro, and I have Hall instead of Concer and no Munoz. It's, so it's yeah, the, the bench to me is a bit strange. I mean, you, if I, I don't get it. I'd have Munoz yeah. ahead of Concer personally. Yeah, yeah. So you could drop Munoz, Munoz down to a four and use that money. Um, yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it an eight though. No, I think this is the strongest one. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, so if I gave 7.5 before, this has to at least be an 8 for me as well. So that's a nice one. Let's keep going. We want to get to the ones that were submitted on X because there's um, a lot of them as well. But I've zoomed in so much, right, that I don't know how to zoom back out anymore. It's, it's a madness in here. Um, so Dom's team, no Salah and Harlan drop. So this is a no Miam as they're more famously known. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, we'll, we'll try to speed up here. So where are we? 33 minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll try to do this one in two minutes. Um, um, so it looks good. I don't like Cloyver, but apart from yeah, that. Yeah, Cloyver and Watkins. Uh, Watkins is obviously, I mean, scored the most points last season, but he's an unknown, isn't he? He hasn't even started a game yet in pre-season, has he? So, um, so as a team, I won't give it a high rating, but as a structure, nah. what do you think yeah. about as a structure? Because it's yeah. like an armor son. And Watkins I mean, we get have blind, a... I think we get a bit blindsided by, I mean, we don't know any of the effective ownership, but we can only go on what we see on Twitter and obviously the percentages on, on, the, on the website. But um, it's obviously got no Salah, no Haaland, but it's still got players that can score points there. Like he's mm. got three premium midfielders. In and his you, you could say Watkins is three close premiums. to premium when he starts uh, Watkins eventually. Watkins is, yeah, close. 
stack defense as well it's a very differential team this um if you're willing to captain those, Saka yeah. Palmer Sun every week then I think you could go down this route but and you're betting against millions of FPL managers yeah, every week it's going to be one of those teams that's going to be up there or or if a really if far Salah down or Ireland Hall in the first few game weeks you're going to be struggling and then you make a decision at that point just do we do I stick with it or do but I equally, you could say the other way, right? Because one other interesting thing oh, is there's course, no yeah. Isaac, right? So maybe if yeah. Watkins was Isaac, if Watkins was Isaac, I would give this an 8, 8.5. Yeah, as so they know Harlan. Yeah, so like, because it's Watkins, it has to go back down to 7 for me. Yeah. Those two, I just think, I know it's West Ham and I'm a bit blind. I, I think that West Ham Villa game on the, on, on the first day of the season on the Saturday, I think it's going to be a tight game. I think both teams are not are going to not want to lose that game. So this one is from Elrond Covered, um, one of our Patreons. So this team has Kwanzaa, Salah and Jota. Yes. Um, it has Munoz starting, Robinson and Barkov on the bench. Okay, I, I really like this team. I really like this team. I'm not I'm not sure on the double Palace defence. I know they've got decent fixtures, but I'm never a fan of double defensive kind of any team. Um, obviously, as soon as I can see, that's kind of eight points gone from your team already. Um, I would probably, I've got Henderson in my draft, I'd probably move Munoz onto someone else or look or or look for another goalkeeper a 4.5. But now, as you said, yeah, decent team. I think I'd give that another, another eight. Triple Liverpool is interesting. So obviously, with that, he's obviously attacking the early fixtures there. Yeah, I did look at that. Um, th yeah, th that's a tough one for me. Um, this is very similar to my team. I'd say the main difference is where there's Ezra, I have um, a rotation of Bob and uh, Rogers, but here there's Ezra and Burton for 4.5 million. Um, defense, I guess, with the extra money that you've saved, you have Guardiola to my Poro, but then I have. Trent over Kwanzaa. So in my mind, I'm looking at this and I'm like, mm. how have you ended up with like one less midfielder than me? And I have Trent <laughs> for your Kwanzaa. So, and our front line is the same. Like, I think it's, I, I, I think it's just the structure, something about it I don't quite like. So for that reason, for the fact that Bergvall is a bit of a long-term punt and pray yeah. he gets in somehow, I, I, I don't know. I, I like the team to hold, but I'm going to go 6.5 on this one. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah. I do like uh, the front line though. That front line is the most likely front line I got into the season. <laughs> just to let you know, it's going to be interesting on Friday seeing all the minis. Oh, also, one thing is they say uh, so. Elrond said Jota could become Gordon. I yeah, don't think that's. I wouldn't score it more highly for that, but I think no. it's interchangeable. Henderson and Gabriel are more locked to start. Pickford and Poro will be swapped out for them. Aya could become Robinson or. Hall. Or, okay, there's some of this has a lot of details, so we'll come back to you in Discord. But in terms of the See, team, this, this is, has Barrett and Diaz as well, and is well, that this, is, this was something I'm temp I'm very tempting with, tempted with, and I know I said I don't like double defense. I just don't see Trent as a defender. Um, he's got so many routes to attack and returns that you can kind of treat him as a as a sit mid uh, that can get. Defend, uh, obviously clean sheets I I do want Trent but then I do want Kwanzaa as a 4.5 million option I think he's one of the best 4.5s so saying that that means I want both so I'm going to have to go double Liverpool defence um, I like this team I'm not sure on the Barrett and Diaz I don't mind it long term. I think that's yeah. a great long term pick, yeah. but he could play in the front two if they play. I like would, three and I would probably three. start. I mean, he's probably fixed his team maybe by the points because this is using hub, isn't it? But I yeah. would, I, I would maybe start. I don't know, but Pedro over Rice. Is a new, is that Southampton have got Newcastle on the first day, haven't they? Yeah. I'd probably start Pedro over Barrett and Diaz. Yeah, that's not a bad. But I like I like this team. And as I, as we said earlier, 
I know that Kieran said in the chat that Rice is high scoring and outscored, outscored all those um, players last year, but Rice did have a really good season last year. Whether he keeps it up, I don't know. But um, yeah, like in my mind, yeah. like I look at this and so because of the type of manager I am, and like maybe I had to get this out of my head, like not leaving money on the bench. I just look at this and my immediate reaction would be I'd be like, okay, Pedro might be good for the long run, but I could skip those first few fixtures till they play the promote team. So then I'd be like, if I save one million and downgrade him, could Rice then be like Gordon? Gordon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So in my yeah. mind, I look at that and I'm like, exactly, well, Pedro's yeah. on the bench anyway. Would I rather yeah. Gordon at home against a promoted team yeah. or Rice? So in my so that's yeah. just the way I play. Obviously, it means my bench will be worse. Like the 4.5 million forward won't play, oh, for course, example. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I just don't believe that the players in the way that we have the more subs now, right? With the five subs and stuff. Like, I just think eventually my players will get minutes regardless. But so then, yeah, but then as soon as you get an injury or a... Or a yeah, but then I use my transfers, right? So in my or, mind, I'm not worrying Gabriel, about rolling. Or a Gabriel from last year hmm. that isn't Yeah, starting. but I'm not worried about rolling, right? So in this team, if oh, something okay. goes yeah, yeah, wrong... No, fair enough. Yeah, like, think about it. Is Saka going to not play? Saka is a maybe Barrett and Diaz Holland. Most of them are nailed, right? That's what yeah, I'm going to say. Yeah. And this is where the defender comes handy. So I think if you've then got, like, if you downgrade Pickford and get another half a mil to mm. upgrade, like, a cheap defender to a 4.5, then you can have, like, a Lewis Hall or a Conser or yeah. someone yeah, else yeah, to yeah. add as another. So so what would happen is you're playing 3-5-2, but if one of the uh, midfield five or the front two don't play or get injured or whatever, you still have, like, another 4.5 million defender to lean back on. Yeah, so yeah. I think for me that's all right. Um, oh, what did we give this? I, um, I, I like okay. it a lot. I'm still okay. going to go for like an eight, seven. Okay, okay seven. seven. Yeah. So Catherine's team as well. Let's have a quick look at this one. And then we're almost on the ones from Twitter. So Catherine's team, Smith Rose in this one, Quansa Salah Yotta. That's a, another repeat. Wood is here. Munoz. Okay. Yeah, I think this is one of the. I think this is probably the best we've seen of I mean, a Salah Harlan draft yeah as we've seen I think this is the best Salah Harlan draft we've seen the, the conversation we've just had had about leaving money on the bench she could it's Catherine did you say she yes, could Catherine. she could drop Muniz down to a 4.5 or a 4 and upgrade Smith Rowe but I can see I can see why um people going Smith Rowe he's been brilliant in pre-season um manual in the first game of the season i don't see as the toughest fixture they haven't looked too great at the back but no i think this is i'm gonna i'm gonna stick my neck out and say a nine i'm gonna give it nine i'm gonna be nice yeah i think looking at this i'll go 8.5 I, I really like it i think it's a great team um i'm, I'm not so hot on the forest players as everyone else is my preferred striker is muniz or pedro but i can see the appeal in the first three for a forest for sure and it does say sure. would could become muniz so i think yeah it's a tough one so um claire's one i've been on this since three weeks ago but i'm wavering on two to three players so this is i think the last one maybe or the last one of the two in this course so this one has hudson adoy so another uh, forest player but with muniz partnership odegaard in here as well it's a salah harland draft Van der Ven, Anderson, they will make a first appearance. How much is Van der Ven? I think he's 4.5. He's 4.5? I think so. I'm pretty sure, like, if he was 5... Is he 4.5 or is he 5? Let me double check. He's 4.5. Wow. Very cheap. Okay. Yeah, he's cheap. That's a good good entry for Spurs defence. I think... We know, however, how Ange plays, and Spurs rarely, rarely keep a clean sheet. Um, don't think Van der Ven has too many entries for attacking points. Um, but yeah, if Spurs defender for four point five, if they if they get better at the back, maybe. Um, I think it's tough. It's tough for me. I know it's Leicester away the first game, but it's got Arsenal in one of the games, and I, I think personally, like I look at that. I like and I would yeah. get Quanza, for example, right? Because yeah. I'm like, well, that's yeah. like a gem that's emerged. Yeah. Same yeah. price point, way better fixtures Liverpool for Liverpool. Liverpool pair at the back, possibly. 
Now, obviously, yeah. like if Kwanzaa doesn't start after a few shaky performances, that's a different story. You have to fix that, but yeah. you'd expect Van der Ven to be nailed for the long term. So it's a good value, as um, Taste of Chaos is saying as well. Yeah, cool. I'd, I'd say, say a seven. Seven. Um, I will. I think she's this. covered. She's. I like it. No, I like well. it. I, I. I'd like to get your thoughts on Odegaard before we move on to the next. True. One. Okay. Just well, let me say I give it a seven point five. Um, I'll talk about Odegaard though. So, as you know, I'm literally like the only thing I've been trying to do for a week is rip my team apart to get Saka. So, I am willing to pay that extra. I think if you absolutely can't get there, I think he'd be the next player I would pick. I I, I think I would go there. If there is a world in which you could turn Muniz into Havertz instead and have a cheaper player than Odegaard, I think I'd prefer mm. that too, personally. I think for me, my order right now is kind of like Saka, Havertz, Odegaard as the attackers. I did yeah. put a tweet out earlier where I got a bit of tinkering madness and there was a midfield of uh, Yota, Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli and yeah. like target the Wolves home game and the, um, the Brighton home game. But then I was like, you know what, I need to relax and step away from this keyboard. Um, deadline couldn't come soon enough I, I really love Odegaard and my concern right with him and I just put it out there is there are games where he'll play like further forward as like a kind of floating 10 but on the inside forward and he'll kind of float in with Saka and that's fantastic that's great but it depends on the left center mid partnership I think personally yeah and with yeah. the kind of diversity of players now in terms of variations of how Arteta can play and setting up against different opponents I do worry that, like, you know, who's going to be at the base? Is it Jorginho, Rice, or is it Partey if he stays fit? Is it, you know, Havertz mm. left centre mid with Jesus up top or Trossard false nine? Or is it Havertz up top with Marino or Rice at the left centre mid? There's just so many variations. And whether it's kind of like Rice, Marino, or Havertz at the left centre mid, I think that will have an impact on Odegaard. So for me, yeah. for that reason alone, it's a wait and see. Okay. It's just a wait and see. Um, I think as a player, he's amazing to watch. He's an incredible player. But in terms of like whether that will equate into more FPL points to Saka over the fixtures that we have up ahead, yeah, I, I personally will go for the penalty taker for the extra half one and a half mil when he doesn't give it to someone else. Yeah, which will hopefully only do <laughs> if it's a second penalty going yeah, forward. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's my kind of preference. Cool. Is um, yeah, I like Odegaard. If you can't get to, yeah, did I, did I give this what I gave this a seven point five? Seven. So I think um, she did send a couple other teams about alternative setups. I don't think we're going to have time to look at these in too much detail. I'm just going to have a quick scan, see if there's anything worth calling out. So long staff, five million. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have long staff. Um, this one's a heavy at the back, I guess. Yeah. Gabriel Guardiola. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think they're all quite similar. I, I prefer. Yeah, no, I think I prefer the first one, but with some of those changes that we mentioned, like. Uh, I would maybe change Van der Ven to Kwanzaa myself. But let's go to the Twitter questions. I'm going to timestamp these ones as well for anyone coming from X to see their questions. So 48 minutes in, we're going to do all the X teams. Now. So please, guys, I'm going to refresh this. If you've not already submitted it, it's probably too late because I'm just going to scroll down the Twitter post now and basically do every team in the order they appear as fast as we can because we've got 12 minutes. Um, let's see. Maybe we can stay a little bit longer, but yeah, we have 12 minutes. is kind of like a rough time. FPL Church is the first one. Let me maybe zoom in on these as well. Let's see how this one looks. Well, actually, I think this one just we said if I just picture. clicked them. Yeah, these look just a lot better than this squad. Yeah. All right, here you go. FPL Church. So 48 minutes. Here was first. Nobody. Twitter amateur. <laughs> I got to learn from you, right? 30k master. Okay. Congrats. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, so. Um... Clearly someone, yeah. I mean, Church, we clearly know, knows what he's doing. Um, it's a good team. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it and just say it's an eight. Um, it's similar to mine at the moment, but a couple of, that's not saying mine's an amazing draft. Um, but yeah, I'd say an eight. Yeah, I think unless there's players we've not seen before that we can briefly touch on, we'll just give scores from here on in. That that was the one that was the one I was going to talk about because I know we spoke about it earlier in our like when we were offline. The Newcastle defence, who's the best four point five to have? And I know it's been spoke that it's Livermento or Hall, um, even Burn, I guess. Burn. Yeah. yeah, I think Botman's out of favour now. So 
if you were to pick one of those which one would you go for so i currently have hall in my own team okay. but yeah i'm a bit more concerned about him now because if Trippier doesn't leave yeah start to look at that and then like if they do buy mm -hmm. gate from palace mm -hmm. then i'm like is he mm -hmm. coming to partner shah in the center back yeah. and then you have botman who's injured so then there's another center back there yeah. so it's like you look at that back line right i think someone i've read online they were saying if you look at the back line of hall um shah gay and um let's say trippier mm. like he might be like you know what how loves burn he might be like i'll just whack him burn at left back for the height to defend set pieces so i just feel like that's something that concerns me a bit so yeah. i'm okay. going for him because yeah. he will start game week one okay. and i see that southampton home game as a huge upside see again it could be yeah, a yeah. one pointer, but i think this could be double digits as well yeah. On the other side. so yeah yeah for me he's taking like the corners and stuff like he's taking set pieces so I, I just have to go at 4.5 million if he stays on and nailed and like yeah he doesn't sign or yeah he yeah. does sign but burn doesn't play left back there's too many good things that could happen from this pick for me to not go there and um obviously tt came on the channel if you missed that guys go to the episode yeah, yeah, earlier yeah. in the preseason right about newcastle and uh, he had uh hall in his team back then when everyone else was going for Livramento. So it's like quite he, he's been hot on hall from the beginning. All the Newcastle fans. We have some hot. we have some breaking news. I saw someone say one breaking news. I saw someone saying Bob could be injured, but now it's been updated from Claire to say Bob apparently suffered a broken leg in training, waiting for official confirmation. That would change things up real quick. Um, Mafio, good to see you, buddy. Apparently, Oscar Bob got a yeah. serious injury, so should be. Th this could make my decisions for me. That I thought I. Th this could really <laughs> help me with my planning. Okay, I'm really sorry for Oscar Bob because he is an exciting player. I, I hope yeah, it's nothing that's serious in this just a minor thing um that would that um, make would that make doku more um, appealing no no so i think really? savio will play there or bernardo savio. silva for example yeah so i think Grealish and um doku is obviously kind on of, left. yeah so i think because of that Grealish is like slightly a risk still right for the yeah. first game so i think in that sense doku will probably start left wing and then that leaves one yeah. spot for bob and savio and bernardo and these yeah. guys um but yeah, no, that sounds that's, like it's that's a bit risky. Horrible. Depends how bad the broken leg is. That would be really bad. Um, I hope for his sake it's not. He's a very young, upcoming, promising player. Um, Jasper says, I got late in joining. Have you roasted my team? Jasper, just let me know in the chat if you sent it on um, X or Discord. We've just started going through the X ones. I did the Discord ones. I can't remember if we did your team. If it was on Discord, let me know. But if it's on X, we're going to get to it shortly um sexy pink jersey nema change clubs but not the sponsor i see yeah so fly emirates and adidas are still here but um, today it's real madrid in pink i love the pink shirt san Cal, good to see you locked in nema ray Hahn, two 4.5 million goalkeepers yeah so this team has flecken and henderson not for me but i can see why it's, it's nice to lock in for the long term if that's what you're looking for um bobby says his is stuck in a dm um okay you've put it on the x thread since okay thank god uh, luca at the end we'll come to your question if we get a chance but for now we're going to roast the teams and i don't think maybe we'll get q a but let's see um so this one we'll keep going i think we've got to speed up from here for the twitter one so yeah here and here in fpl discomfort raya and gold trent Porobocco, minte is in early smith Rowe, rice and sun isaac habits harlan kwanza Bereton diaz and life davis on the bench <laughs> This is a very exciting team. It's very different to what we've seen. I will I happily like Kieran give like, you a. I'll give him a seven point five. Yeah, I'm gonna say the same, but I, th I do like the way Kieran plays. He he's just he he's not a template player. He doesn't give a shit. He he picks the players that he likes. Obviously, the players that he thinks will score points, and I like it. It's a bit. I think the only question I would have to him is why is he why has he got Quantzu if he's not starting him against um he really Ipswich. likes Barco though so in his head yeah, he's like no, that's massive fair. Brighton that's guy fair. yeah that's fair. it's like it's one of those like if he's not starting him against Ipswich when is he ever going to start him but I guess Barco's got a good fixture may might have a good fixture and we don't know how long Barco will last um, right if Estupinia yeah, comes back had Yoglu signing so yeah. It might be just that he wants to take those Barco points while he's sure he'll play, but it's yeah, a tough one. 
but 7.5 yeah, yeah, yeah. that we both give i love oh, the I sun it. pick it, i'm yeah. starting to lean more towards like say sun if i was going to try and get rid of salah for saka i would look to get saka and sun for salah yeah. rather than um solanke for now for me personally so we keep going ben moxham yeah we've seen raya and saliba munoz and hall i, I like this um interesting because ben's a big chelsea fan and he hasn't got in kunku yeah yeah ben is let, a us big, know. Big, let us know about yeah. that ben yeah that's yeah. that's a that's a worrying one isn't it chelsea yeah. fans are, all their fans are telling me well, maybe it. maybe maybe it's the way because the way i play is i rarely have any west ham players as you know so because it's a bit of a double je- like it's a bit of a, a double jeopardy there like if west ham is shit and it makes my FPL team shit as well. Um, obviously, on the other side, the flip of the coin is if, if when Bowen got a hat trick last year, I was obviously ecstatic and he was in my team. But I remember Blackwolf had him captain. Um, but yeah, maybe he plays it similar to that that he just doesn't pick Chelsea players or he just doesn't fancy Nkunku. Oh, I just really like this team. Just to yeah, it's a nice this. team. So I will happily give this an eight. I'll give it an eight as well. He's got Bob what, there. Bob is well, he's, he's got a, he's got a change. There's Bob a replacement now. though, right? Yeah. Someone like yeah. me who has both Bob and Rogers is a bit more cagey in the Bob news. But um, mm. I think if you've only got Bob, I think everyone. I think all, obviously all those all those people that were locked in <laughs> with Bob in their teams, and now we're just going to switch Bob to Rogers, I guess. So Ben says more of a wait and see situation with my lot. Yeah, so that's oh, what I'm hearing know. a lot. Yeah, he's on the live chat. Oh, nice to see you, Ben. What do we think of Kulusevsky? So I'll come to Kulusevsky maybe at this point when we see Johnson in this team because we can talk about the pair of them. So this mm. team um, is from Dylan, FPL Canadian on X. Harlan Wood is out. We've got Jacob Murphy and Johnson in here. Yotter and Saka Mikalenko starts. Guardiol on the bench. Smith Rowe on the bench. This is a strong team. Um, I'm not sure about Johnson with the Solanke signing and eventually when Richardson comes. But in the short term, my one thing that I heard which would worry me is that Obviously, in the preseason, Kulu played as the centre forward, his son mm. off the left. But in the mm. recent game, in the final preseason game, I think it was, um, Son played centre forward with Kulu on the right. And I don't know if that was just to like prepare Kulu on the right now that Solanke is going to spearhead the attack. So there's a little bit of doubt on both. And that kind of makes me worried about both the Johnson and Kulu picks. I think they are value, but they're probably going to share that right wing slot. And unless Madison really falls out of favour, I can't see both of them starting. So, yeah, so for me, that reduced minutes and the fact that I only really like the first couple of games for Spurs, I don't think I would do that. So for this, I would give your draft a six and a half out of ten, Dylan, unfortunately. This looks more like a draft league one that we did together than an FPL one, buddy. I'm sorry. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of Kulusevsky from Taste of Chaos, any thoughts on Kulusevsky or, do you, or are you avoiding both him and Johnson for now? Um I'd be I'd be avoiding both of them. I think there's if I want if I want a Spurs player, I'd be having Poro, Solanke, or or Sun in my team. Fair enough. I'm just checking. Do you know if it's either of our turns in the other draft thing? <laughs> no, no, we've got one more pick until it's my pick. Okay, nice. So this is the Drew on X. Um, this is their team. Let's have a look. They've got Leon Bailey to start the season in a 3-5-2 with Nico Williams, who we've not seen yet in the draft. I like this. Um, this is a spicy team. Odegaard captain, despite... Wow, okay. Despite Might have having Zach and Haaland. Maybe he's just not locked in, but... Um, yeah, it would be a brave one to go Odegaard, but it's different. Especially I, I like Salah, Salah, Zach and Haaland. But no, I like the team. I can't really see it because I'm... Oh, is this one uh, this no, one's no, not no. as zoomed in? No, that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. Quick, quick fire, quick fire, cough, Yeah, cough. I'd go seven. Smith Rowe, Bailey, and Nkunku all worry me as picks. So it's like in terms of like all three of them could like get injured at the same time <laughs> just from what i've seen in the last few years in terms of availability but i think the i think at that price point there's there's players you can move on to We've true obviously spoken about John yeah Pierre. but i look at those fixtures on paper right it's yeah. man city home west ham away man united away it's like 
I'm worried that they're all like almost wait and sees for me. I'd want one or two of them to have yeah, all yeah, three yeah. of them and rely on a three yeah. five two. Yeah, I guess Armstrong is there, so at least it's not a dead forward. So for that, I'll go seven out of ten. I don't mind that. We got Dan Gordon versus Eze versus Jota is the main decision. It has Solanke, Smith Rowe, Rogers as well, and Kunku on the bench. Robinson is here. Okay, I like this team. I will go eight out of ten for this one. What about you? I like it. It's similar to the one a couple of a couple of teams ago. Um, he's obviously got Nkunku there to come in from game week two, but I like it. Um, I'd go an eight just so we can move it along. Hey, Hayden says Man United away might as well be a green fixture. Um, I can't argue with that. Dan does say that with the comments about Smith Rowe's fitness, in the sense that he's not played much football in like two years, that you know. The manager has said he's obviously gonna have to build mm. that up. Um, Fulham fans seems to believe he will start. Con can tell us, I'm sure, in the chat. Uh, maybe he just gets managed for the first few weeks and you might see a few 70 to 80 minutes, but um, I have no worries about him long term. He was available for most of last season, he just didn't get on because Arteta just I think the team sadly moved past him. And sad as it is, mm. I'm excited by his chance to go somewhere and play regularly and be one of the key men in that team and really unleash his talent. He was there. As the first hey Lemboy way before even saccharin these guys as that young promising player we all thought right croydon the Bruyne. so yeah. yeah i really like him um i wouldn't worry too much about those fitness comments vanessa gabriel versus guardiol can't wait to listen and laugh so let's look at vanessa's team minte starts with as a um there's a lot of seven to eight out of tens i'm really people are this is what i mean by the game's gotten harder all yeah, the yeah. teams are much better now right yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so we give this one, um, I, I'll, I'll go this one a, seven and a half. Yeah, I'll go seven. Do you know what? I know we're going off on. Um, I'm not seeing any Manchester United players in any of these drafts. You know what's funny? A lot of the big content creators who've got rid of Salah to get Saka, they've also brought in um, Bruno, because Bruno's obviously going to show up high on a lot of algorithms, right? Mm. Like 90-minute man, penalties, all the underlying numbers. Um but yeah, so I think um, just in the interest people of people don't trust Man United, I guess. That's what it's come down to, right? We sort of comment about it being a green team. Um, mm. so yeah, not home in the first game of the season, Friday night under the lights. Oh, well, I, I hope Fulham do like put up a fight, yeah, and really, yeah, take them. But I've predicted that in a few of the predicted leagues. I did have Don Acho in my team a couple of weeks ago. If you got a leak that he starts on Friday, I might be tempted. Would you be tempted more by him? I'd be yeah? tempted. Man United have got two first, uh, two fairly decent fixtures, haven't they, to start the season? So they do, they do. Fulham home is obviously the first one, but Fulham home think... and then Brighton, and then Liverpool, and then Southampton. I can see, like, as a season-long pick, I like yeah. it more in draft, yeah. but I personally don't want to start with him. But he's here in this draft, right? So we have, um, yeah. The first team that has Bruno, Eze, Son, Gibbs, White, Saliba and Gabriel at the back. So double Arsenal defence. Rogers, Robertson on the bench. I like this team. Is Randy Shafter's team. Randy's a very good player despite the memes. Um, yeah, no, he, he, knows, he knows what he's doing. I think he uh, I think he spends as much time on FPL as he does on memes. Uh, the, double, the double Arsenal... It was so last year, but maybe it might work again um, this year. You don't know. Or maybe he's just undecided on which one to go for. So he's just picked both. Um, but yeah, no, I like it. Um, I don't know if I can. I'll give it a seven and a half. Randy, I'm sorry, but like, even though you've got a double Arsenal, I'm going to go for um, six and a half out of ten. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, Bob Bobby says zero out of ten. I right, try again. <laughs> um, so Colm <laughs> says Smith Rowe should get at least seventy minutes, in my opinion. Yes, yeah, so I, I think I agree with that. Nehal's team as well. So now we've got this one quick. Now we're going to start giving scores because we've seen all these players. Um, I'll give this a eight. Obviously, he's got to do something about Bob. Like Bob, that's, yeah. an eight. Bob. that's an eight for me. Bob to Rogers, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Eight out of ten. We've got to Bobby's team now. Let's That's see a zero. Is that a zero out of <laughs> no, ten? Um, 
it looks like one of the teams we saw recently. Um, I, I do like this team and Kunku Mikalenko on the bench. Okay, this is obviously the compromise is obviously Rogers and Smith Rowe again because he's obviously got Haaland and Salah. Um, I don't know if he dropped Trent down to Quanso and then he's got a bit of cash to play with to upgrade Smith Rowe or Rogers, but I still think it's a really good team. Um, seven and a half. Well, I'll go um, four and a half out of ten just for you, Bobby, for not having any Arsenal players. Shame on you, man. Shame on you. Um, Jaskarin, we've got to your team now. So, yep, it is here. So let's see Jaskarin's team. One of our members. What is this? This is... What app is this? I used it's to on Android this. only. It's this like is a football F- manager is this app. FM, this is FFM, isn't it? I used yeah, to use yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Everyone used to say it's better than the official. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good, this one. The transfers. I, might, I might have to go back to this. I don't have Android, use... so I've never got to use it. Does because does this this doesn't link into our? You ha- would you have to put your team into this? No, no. I think you connect like uh, I you think can you connect like, log it in interstitial. Yeah, even now, I think you can do your transfers through it and stuff. I don't know if you can still do that, but you used to be able to. Yeah. Um... No, I like to see him. Obviously, he's got Bob, but we're not. We don't need to dwell on. Is the second much. Neko Williams? I like seen. Do you think he's underrated as a pick with the opening Who? fixtures? Neko Who? Williams in defence. Ne- or, or do you think it's just it's they've not worth? The decent, they've got the decent fixtures. Obviously, with Solanke leaving Bournemouth now, how well are Bournemouth going to be up top? So you might pick up points early in the season. But then I guess when Fulham have got a decent fixture, he can use Robertson, Robinson or Mbarco. So I don't hate it. Um, it, it. It allows him to have Salah, Haaland, Jota and Gordon in his team. Um, and he, and Isaac and Solanke. So it's, mm. it's one of those teams where he obviously has spent no money at the back um, and put it, a lot of it in his, in his attack. Um, that's a pretty decent front eight. Obviously, Bob will will become someone else, but that's a pretty decent front eight, to be honest. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Um, I, I still like the Munoz pick as well. So I think with that in mind, there's some spicy picks there as well. I, I'll go it's for it. Got that double eight palace. Out of 10. I don't like the double palace because they're obviously playing West Ham in game week two. And I guess the thing is, Flecken doesn't have the greatest six just short term, long term. He's no, good. Yeah. He's so that's, that's why I've gone. I've gone Henderson, Henderson has the first yeah. ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I think I'll go seven and a half. I like that one, Jaskarin. Robbie, this is most likely my starting 11 going into game week one. Okay, let's just do ratings now. And guys, if you're in the chat, if we've gone through your team, please please do um, hit that like button if we've gone through your team and support the channel. But um, yeah, we're also trying to get to 2,900 subs. I think we were like eight or nine away. So if you're new here, please do subscribe. But yeah, let's keep going. So, Robbie, this one, let's just give ratings because we've seen that's nice. Robbie, I will give you. I just like that front three. For me, I just like that front three. Any any team that's got that front three is going to be an eight. Fair, fair. I'm going seven and a half. This is Kevin Rose bench boost team. I think they bench boosted per game week one last year as well. Um, Oh, where's he? Oh, he hasn't got Salah. That's why. Um, The bench boost though is a strong bench boost. Um, If that pays off, I'd say. God, it's difficult because obviously it's a bench boost, but I'd go a nine. I think at the bench half. boost, I'd go eight yeah. and a half, nine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we've got Benji's team, one hour, eight minutes and 50. I told him I'd tell him what time it was. So let me just write okay. that down somewhere so yeah. I remember. Four at the back uh, team. Yeah, I know, right? We don't see um, many of them. And we right? haven't got his bench. Oh, no, we have got his bench. And there's Hudson um, on the bench with Bob. So two midfielders benched to get um, Saliba, Guardiola, Hall, and Trent out. Henderson there, we've got Saka, Eze, Jota, Haaland, Pedro, Is that It's obviously big at the back. It's obviously fairly big at the back. That's where he spent, like, his money. I don't know if he could... I mean, he's, he's captaining Trent in the first game week as well, which I don't actually mind. I'm all... Like, whenever Trent gets a big haul, I always look at him, oh, that, that was so obvious. It was so obvious that... <laughs> in Liverpool, switch, it, was yes. so, it was so obvious that Liverpool were going to get a clean sheet. And then it's so obvious that Trent would get an attacking return. 
And as soon as that happens, Trent's got at least a double digit haul already. So it's like, it just look, it always looks in hindsight, just so obvious that why wouldn't you do it? It's just, it's just different. It's just, I, I like this. The yeah. only things I would change, right, is obviously if the Bob news about the broken leg yeah. is true. I think that can easily become Rogers or Ahmad for a short term punt if you like. I don't know if I would bench any of those four defenders though for whoever you bring in, which then makes me question the Hudson Odoi pick, mate. Yeah, what why is he that this I think we who who are we speaking about? I think it was Kieran, wasn't it, with benching Quonsa. Um, if you're not gonna play Hudson Odoi against Bournemouth at home, like when are you gonna play him? Like, like, why even have him in my mind, right? So in my what's mind your point, what's your point of owning Hudson Odoi if you're not gonna if you're not gonna start him? I'll still give an 8 out of 10, but what I would say, what would make me improve it and lock in would be if Hudson Adoy either, like, I'm just thinking, if Guardiola was a cheaper defender and Hudson Adoy was like a better midfielder, like a Gordon with the money, or if Hudson Adoy was like 1 million cheaper as fodder, like a 4.5 million, that would then yeah. obviously at least give you like 1 million to spend on Bob and maybe get a 5.5 mil mid. Um, but yeah, I think I just. I think Hudson Odoi, if you're going to start with him, is really for those first three fixtures. And I don't think he's going to score as many. I think he got like eight goals from like two, three XG. So I, I don't see that happening again, personally. Gareth, still unsure on Poro, Eze, and Kunku, but here we are. Poro. Okay, so he got his... This is a nice team. Um, obviously, a 4.5 million forward, so 4.42. By the way, um, it's, your, it's your pick, uh, fella on um the draft yeah, you, oh, you're, you're okay. on the clock like, yeah, so, I think, so let's just give let, yeah i think let's do another two three minutes we're going to try to do like five or six teams in that time all right i'll give that a an eight i'm gonna go seven out of ten for me we've got morgan 1.5 million in the bank to upgrade Solanke to watkins that's not been talked about enough I like that idea of saving money for game week three to do Solanke to Watkins. I really yeah, I like, like that. This, I like this team. That's another that's another eight, maybe even pushing an 8.5. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Hayden, closest I've been to being locked in. I would like to start Smith Rowe, but I don't want to bench Bob. So that might have made your decision for you if the Bob yeah. news is true. Um, the team as a whole, I will, damn, there's a lot of good teams. We're seeing teams loaded up for the first three, four games perfectly, right? Um, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10, buddy. So that's for Hayden. We've got Kevin Stanley. We're almost through all of them. So this one is Holland. Is that really? It's Gordon Saka. I'll give that an 8 as well. I like that. Or maybe even an 8.5. I think I'd lean this one more to 8.5 in the last yeah. one. I, I, like, I like this nice. one a lot from Kevin. We've got Ray Hahn's team. I think this might be the last one unless I happen to see the one that okay. I sent in DM. Lovely. Um, yeah, no, I really like that as well. Similar to the last one. Um, Still so 8. 8. 5. 8. 5 on that. Um, yeah, Rahan, we'll give you an 8.5. I'm going to click on the DMs, but I, d I don't think that like we're going to actually see... like God, God knows which ones were sent. Okay, they were sent here. 11, one from Neha mate, you've got 11 DMs. Oh, no, that's just group chats, though, right? Like, most of those yeah, are the DMs. They're all muted as well, right? Like, this is just like, look, it's just, it's just relentless. Like, everything's got to be muted, basically. Um, Bobby only sent that an hour ago. Look what's happened since. Um, it, it, I, I just can't keep up with it. But Bobby's team, uh, but also it's game week one, right? And I'm trying to play like 20 different draft leagues and eight different formats. It's, WhatsApp is the same as Twitter for me right now. This is my favorite week of the year and just preparing for launch and going to Fest on Friday. I can't wait to see everyone. So final two teams from uh, Bobby and Nehal. This one, Bobby, I will give you... Last time I gave him a really poor score for not having Arsenal. So I'll be kinder and say 7 out of 10. Um, let's take Nehal's team and then we'll see if there's any questions in the live chat I've missed. So what do we think of Nehal's team? Nehal's team is... Is that captain? Kwanza Jota Salah. Yeah, Nehal, I really like this, buddy. Um, I think personally, I'm going to go for a 7.5 out of 10. I'm just personally, I don't know if it's just me. I'm not as hot on the Solanke and Gordon picks as everyone else, but maybe that's just me, right? So, all right, let's, let's see if there's any questions in here. A couple of thank yous to all the YouTube members and Patreons. We've got our super haulers, FPL, Robbie Greenback, Golf Harbour Boy, David Harrison, 
Thank you for supporting us. Our haulers, Dread FPL Podner, Kevin Rose, Blonde, FPL Teacher, Doni, FPL Tom Gorsuch, Lindsay, Akshay, Dom, Claire, Tursk, Catherine, Harry Not Kane, Neil. We've got Benjamin Lockwood, FPL Rubber Ducky, Big Mike, Grady, Jasper and Singh, FPL Eric, DW Spitter, the FPL Juice Show, and FPL Discomfort. Our patrons, Elron, Cal- FPL California, Mike Berg, Draft Alchemy, and Dr. Green Fun. Thank you guys all for your support. If you want to join the channel as a member on YouTube or Patreon, you can get access to the Discord where there's a little community of about 30, 35 of us just chatting about FPL every week. And um, yeah, it would mean a lot if you can support the channel. But otherwise, if you're new around here, please subscribe. I will be back with a new guest every week into the season ahead. Generally, we'll go live on Wednesdays around 6 p.m. And we'll just talk about the two or three key topics of that game week each time. But yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you on the channel, Dan. Sorry we went over by about 15 minutes, but I didn't want to leave anyone right, hanging. So and we had to answer all the questions. Um, no? I have one question from me, from someone for you from Com. Non-FPL, I just want to get this out there before we leave so that we didn't miss this question. What are, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, so Com said, have you managed to get Fella off the ceiling? I'm sure he thinks the Hammers are going to finish in a Champions League place. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I haven't been on the ceiling. I've just been excited about us being, um, I don't know, what's the word? Um, buying some players um, and exciting players. Um, I'm never confident when we buy a striker. We, we haven't had a decent striker since Paolo Di Canio in the early 2000s. Um, and we've obviously brought in Somerville, um, Rodriguez. I'm probably forgetting quite a few. Um, Kilman, Tadebo. Um, but I think, look, I'd be just, dis- I, f- I think I'd be disappointed if we didn't finish top eight. So, my target would be top eight. If we can get seven for six and get back into Europe again, but happy days. Um, but yeah, t- top eight is where I would put our yardstick of where we, we should finish kind of this year. Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little plug, everyone. Um, so in about half an hour, I'm going to go live on my new YouTube channel, first time ever. Another um, one. Yeah, so this was with Simon, Analytic on the yeah. FPL on X. Um, this one we're going to co-host for the season ahead. It's, again, going to most likely often be on Tuesdays rather than Wednesdays where Locked in FPL is with a guest. Um, Simon and I, we've called this Expected Grass. Uh, it is an FPL podcast, I'll have you know. And today we're just going to introduce ourselves, how we met. And, um, yeah, if you guys are around and you want to check it out we've only got 40 subscribers first streams in half an hour it's our new podcast my new exciting idea third pod i'm running this season now so that's quite crazy but um yeah please support the new channel and this channel subscribe to both if you can and i'm gonna put a link in the chat so if you're around in half an hour please do go check out the um the episode on the new channel but um thank you everyone thank you fella as i mentioned and uh, yeah, we'll get out of here, guys. Um, see wow. you in about half an hour on the other channel and see you on Friday for a uh, meet. See and you on Friday. And everyone in the chat, if you're there Friday, see you there. Yeah, and at FPL Fella on X for anyone who wants to find Dan and talk to him more about FPL this season and interact. And please do let us know if you're down on Friday to the meet sort of fest and we'd love to see you all. We've been locked in FPL. Good luck in game week one. I hope you've enjoyed the Roast My Team special. We'll see you next week for the game week two show. Peace. Cheers, guys. Bye.